very little has been written on this in Pakistan particularly. And I am now referring to uh, this uh, particular issue, dissolution of marriage on the ground of irretrievable breakdown of marriage. Uh, this is the case, Amin Masih versus Federation of Pakistan, PRD 2017, Lahore 610. Uh, and I will read a few passages so that you know how these gentlemen uh, contextualize the law here. This case examines the constitutionality of the repeal of Section 7 of the Divorce Act 1869 through Federal Laws, Revision and Declaration Ordinance 1981 on the touchstone of minority rights guaranteed under the Constitution. The Divorce Act 1869 uh, was there and Section 7 of that Divorce Act, which was applicable to uh, Christians, that was repealed in 1981. Now the petitioner was a Christian who wished to divorce his wife, however, he could not do so under the Divorce Act uh, 1869 as it stood at that time because in order to get divorced he had to prove adultery on part of his wife as per section 10 of the act, an option he did not wish to invoke. Section 10 required that he had to prove adultery. He has he alleged adultery on the part of his wife. He did not wish to do so. He stated that under the repealed section of uh, section 7 of the act, grounds of divorce provided under the UK Matrimonial Causes Act 1973, including the ground that the marriage had broken down irretrievably were available to him. Now the question was that that section was already repealed. Now, what, uh, how the court could provide that particular remedy or that particular right to this particular petitioner when the law was no longer there? So actually that repealing law was challenged uh, as being unconstitutional. Now, Assistant uh, Attorney General, perhaps, yes, Assistant Attorney General for Pakistan, Ms. Hina Hizulai Sahak, uh, gave a few arguments in favor of the petitioner, uh, petitioner's claim. Uh, one thing which was very interesting for me, on her part, she admitted that despite several attempts to introduce amendments in the Act, the State has remained unsuccessful to this effect. So, uh, amendment could not be done through legislation. That adultery clause remained there. <coughs> she also suggested that the Divorce Act 1869 must be in line with the developments in the divorce law as in the rest of the Christian world, so that Christians in Pakistan have the same relief. As far as Advocate General of Punjab was concerned, he said that consensus could not be reached, and this is important, Consens consensus could, could not be reached because the representatives of Catholic Church, Presbyterian Church, and Church of Pakistan contended that amendment in section 10 of the Act would be in contravention of their holy scriptures. Because uh, the 1869 Divorce Act primarily was in conformity with the uh, the dictates of the Anglican Church. It was not uh, acceptable uh, for the Catholics and Presbyterians particularly because uh, marriage for Catholics particularly is a very much sensitive issue. Uh, the court noted however that biblical law was not being examined in this case rather it was state law that we were not examining biblical law, rather we were examining state law. Uh, Justice Sayyid Mansur Ali Shah wrote the judgment, and I suppose it was a DB. Uh, single judge? Okay. Uh, he, he wrote this judgment, and uh, he, after declaring that he was not examining biblical law, still he continued to use Christian divorce law and phrases like this. Anyhow, uh, for me, there are a few issues with this, uh, the way the court uh, dealt with this issue. 
And I would like to highlight those issues because uh, we are talking about the rights of non-Muslims. Uh, one interesting thing was the phrase used by the Honorable Justice Shah, the Christian majority countries. Now I wonder if there is a Christian majority country in the world. If a country claims to be a Christian majority country, most of the countries, and I uh, quickly skimmed through the judgment uh, in this morning as well, the country cited uh, or the, uh, the laws of the country is examined, none of those uh, countries claims to be a Christian country and none of them claims to be uh, making the law on the basis of uh, say Christian theology or law. It was a secular state law and it should have been examined that way. Why call it Christian majority country and why call it Christian divorce law in so many other countries? Why not uh, use the same standard as you are uh, using here, we are not examining biblical law, we are examining state law, but then you are coming up with laws of other states which are secular states and laws which are secular laws and you call them Christian majority countries and Christian divorce law. This is one. Uh, and a more serious question from the perspective of constitutional law would be why the issue is resolved in the court. Why not in the parliament? Why not introduce a law and uh, fill the gap there? Why the, the court takes upon itself this duty? That there is something very wrong with the law and we have to provide this. Uh, Dr. Basi Sab just referred to federal Sharia court's uh, dictation to the legislature. Well, that is also questionable, and we of course uh, criticize this. But in any case, the Federal Sharia Court recommends to the Parliament to make such a, uh, an amendment or make a law. Here what the court is doing, it is coming up with a new law, it is coming up with a new right, and without referring to the Parliament. And this is kind of uh, overstepping, I should say, its authority. Uh, and the reason is very explicit here. This gap in the state law can best be filled by extending the same rights enjoyed by Christians in the rest of the world to the Christians in Pakistan. This can be easily achieved by restoring section 7 of the act. This can be easily achieved. The key word is easily. Because if you go through the parliament, it takes a long time and there is so much of debate and then there are so many opinions of the various uh, Christian uh, scholars who are against this. Now my question is, why so? We are protecting the rights of minorities, very true, we should do that, but is there some way of protecting the rights of minorities in a way that their religious law or their religious convictions and the dictates of their faith are not violated. If the court could, or not only the court, if the legislature as well, if the state could come up with such a solution, of course it would be much appreciated. While talking about the Muslim, uh, sorry, the personal law of non-Muslims, I was also 